Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor, on a mission to become the world's greatest tutor. Today we're going to be looking at a Coulomb's Law problem with a triangle of charges. So let's go ahead and give the setup here. I'm going to have a positive charge here, a negative charge here, and let's say another positive charge right here. They do form an equilateral triangle, which by the way, if they ever say equilateral triangle, what they're telling you is all these angles are 60 degrees and you need to know that. So there you go. Let's give values to these charges. Let's call this one positive three microcoulombs. This one can be negative six microcoulombs. And the one at the top I'll make positive two microcoulombs. And my question is gonna be, what is the net force on the three microcoulomb charge. Very famous question. I'm sure you've seen one like it before. Now the question is, how do we solve it? So if you remember what Coulomb's law says, Coulomb's law says F sub C, C stands for Coulomb, equals K Q1 Q2 over R squared. Usually you'll see me put absolute values here because I deal with the direction, in other words, the positive or negative sign separately. You might also see this K differently. For instance, I've seen professors call this one over four pi epsilon naught, where epsilon naught is another constant. And this is true too, but in this video, I'm just gonna use K. But if your professor wants you to use one over four pi epsilon naught, then just replace every K with that. It's gonna be the same number at the end of the day, because both of those constants are equal to nine times 10 to the ninth. And since this is a numerical problem with all these numbers, that's what I'm just gonna plug in for K anyway. Now the reason why I wrote this equation down is because I want you to notice that there are two charges, Q1 and Q2, but I have three charges in this problem. So how am I gonna do this? The answer is you just use this equation twice. Why twice? You're gonna use the equation once for this interaction of charges between the two positive charges, and then you're gonna use Coulomb's law a second time for the force between the positive and the negative charge. Notice we do not want the force between these two charges because that is not touching the three microcoulomb charge at all. So I don't care about it. So now we just have to decide, do we wanna do the red interaction first or the blue? I'm gonna do the blue first because it's easier. There's no angles, it's just straight horizontal. And so then filling into that equation, K like we said is gonna be nine times 10 to the ninth. Q1 is gonna be, we'll call it the three microcoulomb. Remember that micro is 10 to the minus six, so three times 10 to the minus six. The second charge is negative six microcoulombs, but since I have absolute value, I'll just make that positive since it doesn't matter. Oh, and I forgot to give the distance between these. All of these are going to be a distance of, let's say, 20 centimeters apart. And since it's an equilateral triangle, every side is 20 centimeters apart. And so then I just plug in 20 for the radius. Just kidding, it's 0.20 because centimeters, we need to convert that to meters. So just move the decimal place over twice, 0.20, and yes, that's squared. And so since I have a calculator, we can easily calculate what this is going to be as long as we're careful with the scientific notation. And I'm gonna get 0.00648. In case you're curious, I could also write this as 6.48 times 10 to the minus third. That's fine too, but I'll keep it as the decimal for right now. Okay, so this next thing is very important. We need to know the units and we need to know the direction of this vector. First of all, units, pretty simple. It's Newtons, it's a force, so Newtons. And then for the direction, this is the hard part. Remember, we're talking about the positive and the negative charge. Opposite charges, attract. So the two charges will want to head towards each other like this. I'm completely ignoring the top charge for this, by the way. I'm just focusing on this charge and this charge. And since they want to go towards each other, and since I'm only focusing on the three microcoulomb charge, that means that the direction is to the right, to the right. And the way I can represent that, I can do it one of two ways. One, I can say positive i hat, which just means to the right in vector notation, or you can choose positive x hat, which is the same idea, but a different way of writing it. So I'm gonna choose i hat, 
And again, if you're not familiar with iHat, you've never seen it before, remember, all that means is in the positive x direction. That's all it means. I can also have negative iHat, which means left. I can have positive j hat, which means up. I can have negative j hat, which means down. And by the way, I can also have k hat, which is the z dimension into the page and out of the page, but I'm not gonna get into that in this video. Okay, look at that. I'm already halfway done the problem, kind of. It was definitely the easier half. What I have to do now, which is gonna be much harder, is I need to find the force between the two positive charges. And the reason why this is gonna be tougher is because immediately I see I'm gonna have an angle. So the very first thing I should do is draw a right triangle here. So there's my positive charge, there's my positive charge. Let's make a right triangle and just completely ignore the negative charge because I don't care about it right now. That angle's 60 degrees, this one's 30, and there's my right angle. The top one's 30 because it was 60, but then it got cut in half from the full triangle. And by the way, this is still 20 centimeters. This got cut in half to 10 centimeters, the base. And I don't know what the height is, but it's not gonna be 10 or 20, I promise you that. Okay, now the next thing I'm gonna say is probably gonna confuse you a little bit, but I need to say it anyway, because it's important you understand this. This is the right triangle for distance. We have a distance right triangle, and then we're about to draw a force right triangle. By the way, the way I'm doing this is optional. There's many correct ways to do it, but this is the way I'm telling you to do it. Have a distance right triangle and a force right triangle. And the reason why is this force is unknown, and then I have the X and the Y components. Now these triangles are similar to each other. In other words, the angles are the same, but the numbers could be different. As a matter of fact, they definitely will be different because force is not the same thing as distance. But the reason why I'm doing this is because I need to find the force and then I need to break it up into components. I don't want you to break up into components first using Sokotoa with the distance. You can do that. I don't recommend it. I don't think it's the best way to solve the problem. I think finding the force first is a good idea because that's just gonna be normal Coulomb's law, K, Q1, Q2 over R squared. So K is nine times 10 to the ninth. Q1, we'll call it the three again, the three microcoulombs. So three times 10 to the minus six. And the other charge was two microcoulombs. So that's two times 10 to the minus six. And then in the denominator, this is where that distance is gonna come in. It's going to be the 20 centimeters. Yes, even though it's at a diagonal, that is the distance between them. So I have to write again, 0.20 and that's squared. And again, when I plug this in the calculator, I'm going to get what the force is. The force in this case is 0 0.00216 newtons. But when it comes to the direction, this is where it starts to get complicated because the direction is on a diagonal. Let me prove it. Look at these two charges right here. They are both positive. That means they're going to want to go away from each other. The three microcoulomb goes down to the left. The two microcoulomb goes up and to the right. But since I'm only caring about the three microcoulomb, my direction is going to be down and to the left. And since it's at an angle, this is why I need to split things into X and Y components. So now I need to draw another right triangle. This one's gonna be based off the force one, but unfortunately it's kind of off the picture. In other words, here's my right triangle again. Now there's the force vector. F, and it's gonna be identical but flipped right triangle to this one. And so what that means is if this is 60 degrees, that's 60 degrees, and I still need to find my X and Y components for the force. And in case you're curious, yes, I have to do this. This is not optional. If I wanna find the summation of forces, I need to add the forces together, but I can't add the point zero zero two one six to the point zero zero six four eight I had earlier, because this one points straight in the x direction, this one points in a combination of directions, so I cannot just add them together. I need to split it up into x and y components. And this is where Sokotoa is gonna kick in. So if I wanna find x, x is gonna be cosine, because x is the adjacent leg, and the hypotenuse, my f, yes, that's gonna be the point zero zero two one six. So in other words, cosine of 60 
equals the adjacent leg x over hypotenuse 0 0.00216. Multiply that to both sides, the 0 0.00216 times cosine of 60 degrees, and I will get x equals 0 0.00108. Remember, that's the x component of the force. Also notice it is pointing to the left, and I know that because, remember I said earlier, this force is gonna point down and left, and since it's left, it means it's going to be negative i hat, and that is important because I can only combine i hats together. In other words, x and y have to be kept separate. Then for the y component, the y component is the opposite leg, so what that means is, I'll just show you a shortcut here, if x was 0 0.00216 cosine, y has to be 0 0.00216 sine of 60. And again, that's because y is the opposite leg in this problem. And that's going to get me an answer of 0 0.00187. Now for those of you watching at home, what is the direction of this going to be? Obviously it's down, but how am I going to answer that in terms of i hat and j hat? The answer is negative j hat, because down is negative j hat. And so now that vector I had earlier, the point 0, 0, 0.00216, has now all of a sudden become negative point 0, 0, 0.00108 i hat minus point 0, 0, 0.00187 j hat. Yes, you can put them on the same line like I just did. I'm also going to add the i hat I had earlier in other words, I'm going to add the 0 0.00648 i hat that we got from the very first charge, the positive and the negative charge. And when I add these together, I can only add i hats together. And when I do this, I'm going to get positive 0 0.0054 i hat, still minus 0 0.00187 j hat. And that is going to be my net force. In other words, my final answer. However, just know this is component form. Why do they call it component form? Because it's the x and y components, of course. Sometimes they're going to ask for magnitude and direction. If they ask for magnitude and direction, then I'm not done the problem yet. If I want to find the magnitude and direction of this, the first thing I do is I make yet another right triangle. Yes, I know, it's, it's great. We love right triangles. This right triangle is going to point to the right and downward. How do I know that? Because i hat is positive, which means right, and j hat is negative, which means down. So right and down, there's my net force. You can call it f net if you really want to. And we have the x component. It's positive 0.0054. And then the y component is the negative 0 0.00187, but you'll just see me write positive because I'm going to ignore the negative. And you're allowed to ignore the negative as long as you know what direction we're going. And of course the answer is down, so I'm okay. And if you want to find the net force, in other words, the magnitude, and you remember this is a right triangle because we just made a right triangle here, then that means we're going to use Pythagorean theorem a squared plus b squared equals c squared to find the total magnitude of the net force. And so that means it's going to be 0 0.0054 squared plus 0 0.00187 squared equals the hypotenuse squared, which will be our final answer. So the left side will be 3.27 times 10 to the minus fifth, which is a really small number. But then you just take the square root of that and that will get me the final answer of 0 0.0057. Units are still Newtons. That's my magnitude. I'm happy, or at least as happy as I can be with this topic. But then if I want the direction, look at this triangle again. There's my angle theta. I always draw it next to the origin, which is that point right there. And if I want to find theta, then that's going to be inverse tangent of the opposite leg over the adjacent leg, which in this case, the opposite leg is going to be the 0 0.00187. Yes, I know that was negative, but again, I already know that was pointing downward, so 
I've already taken that into consideration. I'm okay. And the adjacent leg is going to be the 0 0.0054. And then I'm just going to plug this in a calculator, and that'll get me the direction. Make sure your calculator is in degrees, and we get 19.1 degrees. So what that means, if I want to put this all together as one final answer, I would say the net force acting on that 3 microcoulomb charge is a vector of 0 0.0057 newtons, at an angle here of 19.1 degrees. You can even write below the positive x-axis if you want to be really specific. And there we go. There's my net force. So hopefully that made sense. I know it was really hard because it was like a 10-step problem. But that's the reality of what we have to deal with in physics, electricity, and magnetism. How much fun is that? So thank you all for watching. Have a great rest of your day. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care and bye-bye.